Hi, Stefan Smith of Art Smith Craftworks. I've been working on a new steampunk Zeppelin and I'm to the point now where I want to add a patina to the outside of that. I've gotten the uh, skin on it, which is three layers of mache using the technique that I've kind of developed after a while. And then I put a couple layers of a base coat of paint on the outside of that. I tend to get latex paint from people who have paint to get rid of after a project. I will mix it, especially if they give me like earth tones, grays, greens, things like that. Mix colors to the point where I like them and apply those as a base coat. And it doesn't really matter whether it's flat or gloss or semi-gloss. I guess I prefer something somewhere uh, in the middle. When I'm done with that and it's good and dry, then I, I put the patina on and I'm going to show you now how I go about doing that. <clears throat> so basically what I do is I start with a, a, a very thin down sepia-ish colored um, paint and it's just, a, it's just an acrylic paint that I've uh, watered down a little bit. And what I then do is just brush on the the paint here and and just I, I don't have any ceremonial way of doing it I just get it on there um, because I don't want it to be on there too awful long so that it starts to dry too much because what I want to do is I want to give it time to kind of stain the surface of the airship a little bit um, but also to um, dry just a, just a touch so it kind of starts to grab a little and I don't do the whole thing at once I kind of do it in in sections a couple panels or maybe even a, a quarter of it at a time so that I'm not letting it dry too much before I work back into it because just like a lot of patina coatings it, there's going to be an application and then I'm going to take some off with a with a cloth, this cloth that I've got laying here. And it's just a crummy old dish towel that wasn't good anymore that I use for this kind of thing. The other thing that I do sometimes too, and I better move this or I'll wind up knocking that over. Sometimes if I find that the paint's getting a little too dry as I'm working to rub it off, I'll touch it with a little bit of a little bit of water just to kind of revive the paint just a little bit because it is already starting to dry just a little bit and and I don't want to wipe all of it off I want to leave a decent amount on there because I, I want it to kind of look grimy but I don't want there to be too much either and if it looks like I'm getting too much still sticking then I'll then I'll wet just a little bit it also kind of helps a bit if you if you start with um, if you start with a little bit of a wet cloth I don't know what I did with my water well oh here it is <clears throat> so I'll just kind of this is just plain water in a little squirt bottle so I'll kind of give the, the cloth just a little bit of dampness. If it's too wet, then it, then it kind of pulls too much of that paint off. And I, and I have done it where I've gone back in and, and really wet it to get more off. Sometimes as you're, as you're rubbing that too, it'll pick it up from one spot and sort of redeposit it in another. And that's not even a bad look either. Um, it kind of looks cool. I tend to leave a little bit darker on the ridge areas and, and lighten up like the like the flat areas of the um, the panels on the Zeppelin body. This is the same technique I use for all my airships pretty much. Um, sometimes I feel like I've got to work really fast and then I kind of start to relax a little bit and slow down and realize that it that paint would have to dry completely for you to not be able to get it off of there or get any of it off of there and even then I've had it come off if you if you kind of carefully rub a decent amount like right now this is a little bit wetter and you can see that I'm pulling the this this dried paint right off of this panel 
It, because it's not, I mean, it hasn't sat on there long enough to get permanently dry. Plus the, the base coat that I put on the Zep one is kind of a satin. I, I, I tend to use leftover latex paint. Y'all know by now that I'm all about repurposing. So I'm not going out buying, you know, new art paint to do this. That would be kind of silly unless there was a specific color you wanted to try to achieve that you couldn't get otherwise. Um, I find that, you know, when you when you get old paint from people and you and you kind of collect the ones that tend to be in the in the brown or gray, warm gray especially, families. Um, and then just kind of mix them up a little bit to get desired color patterns. You don't really need to go buy new paint because there's plenty of used latex out there that people are dying to get rid of and have a hard time getting rid of it or don't quite know what to do with it. Just tell them you'll take it. <laughs> Use it to, to patina your, your work. Um, you know, just kind of tint it a little bit dark, make sort of a sepia color out of it. I mean, you can make it other colors too. I've done ones that were sort of hedging towards a, a bluish color or, or something like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be sepia. I just like the, the look that gives. And, and this color that I'm going over is sort of, a, sort of a putty color, I guess, if you were to call it something. And when you put this uh, sepia over it and just kind of rub and play with it a little bit, it winds up looking really good. And then you just kind of go back in and adjust it a little bit, adjust it. I've even gone back in and hit it again with the, with the full sepia if I didn't like the, the look of it or if I'd taken too much off in one spot and wanted to add a little bit more back in. As long as you, as long as you keep working back into it carefully with the damp cloth, and, and it doesn't fully dry out, it's actually, you know, a pretty forgiving technique. You can keep adding and removing and adding and removing as long as you're not rubbing too hard to, to damage your your base coat of paint. But you know, that said, if you totally, totally hated what you have come up with, then paint over it again. Hit another, you know, paint it with another base coat of your paint and uh, let it dry and then, and then redo the patina. I'm talking about this in generalities because that doesn't mean you're necessarily doing an airship, but whatever your project is, if you're building, I mean, even model airplanes, you know, you could do this technique with it, I suppose. Um, balloons, uh, you know, any any paint technique that you uh, want to kind of give it a, a patina or a, an old-fashioned look to, I mean, this, this works pretty well for, so um, I just happen to use it or have kind of worked it out for use when I'm building the airships. So, anyway, that's kind of how I do it. So now you can see I've got the, the whole thing patinaed and there's a lot of areas of, of crevices where there's some uh, darker areas and, and that's okay. You don't have to leave things like that. You know, if there are, if there are dark areas you don't like, just kind of carefully work back into them with a, with a damp cloth and you can get uh, some of those to be a little bit lighter if you want something darker. You can either kind of rub back and forth and redistribute some of that paint, or you can even grab uh, a little bit more regular, you know, solid paint and put on there and let it dry and kind of rework things in there. But, but overall, it gives it a, a very different, uh, very aged look. I've had some people also think that this was made out of wood because of a because of the graining effect that kind of winds up happening um, when you've got the the base coat brush strokes in there and then 
you go and do your antiquing over the top of it, it kind of sort of makes it look like weathered wood in a way. So it's a cool look. Try some things out for yourself and uh, yeah, have fun with it. Stefan Smith of Art Smith Craftworks. Uh, we'll see you next time.